Did you know that the ancient Egyptians famous for their pyramids also built massive boats? But how did they do it in a place as dry as a bone? Picture this. A civilization thriving in the desert not only constructs towering pyramids but also colossal boats. These aren't just any boats, they're the size of modern-day freighters, the titanic vessels of their time. But there's a twist in the tale. Egypt is as barren as a desert can be, virtually treeless. So, where did they get the wood to build these aquatic behemoths? This isn't just a head-scratcher, it's a mystery as deep as the Nile itself. Some scholars suggest that the Egyptians were master recyclers, repurposing old wood. Others posit that they traded with distant lands, importing timber in exchange for gold and spices. And then there are those who whisper about ancient technologies lost to time that could manipulate stone and sand into a wood-like substance. But the question isn't just about the how, but also the why. Why did a civilization, nestled in the heart of a desert, need such massive boats? Some say they were used for ceremonial purposes, to ferry the souls of the departed to the afterlife. Others suggest they were used to transport the massive stones required to build the pyramids. Can you imagine that? A fleet of titanic boats sailing across the desert loaded with stones as big as elephants. But hold on to your hats because the mystery doesn't end there. There's another theory, one as audacious as it is intriguing. Some believe that these massive boats weren't just vessels of transport, they were symbols of the ancient Egyptians' mastery over the elements, a testament to their ingenuity and resourcefulness. The ancient Egyptians were a civilization of contradictions. In a landscape as dry as a bone, they built not just pyramids but also massive boats. And the question that looms large is, where did they get the wood? Stick around to discover a theory that'll make your head spin faster than a whirlpool in the Nile. So, we've got these giant boats, right? But what were they for? Could they have been used to transport the colossal stones used to build the pyramids? Now let's wrap our heads around this. Imagine a time before cranes, trucks, and all those fancy machinery. How did the ancient Egyptians move these monstrous stones from the quarry to the pyramid site? Some say they rolled them on logs, but what if there was another way? What if they floated them down the Nile on these mammoth wooden vessels? Now before you dismiss this as a wild conspiracy, consider this. Archaeologists have unearthed boat pits near the pyramids, complete with remnants of wooden ships. These aren't your average fishing boats either. We're talking vessels that could rival the Titanic in size. The ancient Egyptians weren't just making paper boats in a pond, they were building seafaring titans in the desert. And it's not just about size. These boats were intricately designed, showcasing the Egyptians' advanced understanding of shipbuilding. The planks were carefully shaped and fitted together like an intricate jigsaw puzzle, held in place not by nails, but by tight woven ropes. This level of craftsmanship suggests these vessels were made for more than just a leisurely sail down the Nile. But here's the kicker. Some of these boats were found disassembled, neatly packed away in pits. Why would they do that if not for ease of transport? Could these be flat pack, build your own boats ready to be assembled whenever needed? Maybe they were the ancient world's version of Ikea, only instead of assembling wardrobes, they were building boats to ferry pyramid stones. Now, this is all theory, of course, there's still a lot of research to be done, a lot of puzzle pieces to fit together. But it's fascinating to think about, isn't it? The possibility that these ancient people had such sophisticated methods of transport. But remember our burning question, where did all that wood come from? Imagine being in ancient Egypt, tasked with finding enough wood to build a fleet of gigantic boats. Where would you even start? We're talking about a time when Egypt, a country known for its expansive deserts, needed massive amounts of timber. But timber was not a resource readily available in the arid landscape of the pharaohs. So, how did they manage it? One theory is that they sourced their wood from the cedars of Lebanon. It's no secret that the ancient Egyptians had a taste for the finer things, and Lebanese cedar was considered the creme de la creme of timber. It was durable, resistant to insects, and had a delightful aroma. But getting the wood from Lebanon to Egypt wouldn't have been a walk in the park. The Egyptians would have needed to establish trade routes and alliances. They would have had to navigate politics, geography, and perhaps the occasional band of marauding bandits. Not to mention, they would have had to transport the wood across hundreds of miles of desert. It's a logistical nightmare that makes your last move look like a Sunday picnic. Another theory suggests the Egyptians may have turned to the East African coast, specifically Somalia and Sudan. These regions had forests rich in ebony and other exotic woods. 
They were closer than Lebanon and had the added benefit of being accessible via the Nile. Both theories however raise more questions than they answer. How did the Egyptians transport such vast quantities of timber? How did they cut down and prepare the trees? And perhaps most importantly, how did they convince people to do this backbreaking work? Each theory presents its own set of challenges and mysteries, and we may never know the full truth. But what if I told you there's an even wilder theory, one that involves a place thousands of miles away from Egypt? Picture this, the Grand Canyon, a symbol of the American West. But could it hold the key to our Egyptian enigma? Now I know what you're thinking. The Grand Canyon and ancient Egypt? What could these two possibly have in common? Well hold on to your hats because this is where things get interesting. There are whispers, rumors, theories that suggest a connection between these two seemingly disparate worlds. Some believe that the Grand Canyon was a significant source of timber for the ancient Egyptians. Yes, you heard that right. The theory is that the Egyptians, in their ingenuity, might have trekked halfway across the globe, all the way to the American West, to source the wood they needed for their mammoth projects. Now how does this theory hold up? Well, it's fueled by claims of Egyptian artifacts found deep within the canyon. Reports from the early 20th century speak of a treasure trove of Egyptian relics discovered in a cavern high above the Colorado River. The tantalizing prospect of a hidden cache of antiquities has led some to postulate that perhaps, just perhaps, the ancient Egyptians had ventured this far in search of the precious wood they needed. But before you start booking your flights to Arizona to start your own Indiana Jones-style adventure, remember, this is a theory. Skeptics argue that the artifact claims are unsubstantiated, the product of tall tales and overactive imaginations, and the idea of pharaohs sailing the Atlantic a few thousand years before Columbus is admittedly a stretch. Yet, it's hard to completely dismiss the idea. After all, the ancient Egyptians were known for their seafaring skills and their tenacity in overcoming obstacles. And isn't it a tantalizing thought that the solution to our Egyptian wood puzzle might be hidden in the majestic landscapes of the Grand Canyon? Whether you believe it or not, it's a theory that makes you think, doesn't it? Our journey through the mysteries of ancient Egypt has come to an end. But what if I told you there are more secrets to uncover? That's right, folks. The rabbit hole of history is deeper than any pharaoh's tomb. We've navigated the desert of the Titanic, puzzled over the pyramids, marveled at the wood of the pharaohs, and gazed in awe at the Grand Egyptian Canyon. But Egypt is just the first leg of our adventure. Imagine a world where every ancient civilization holds a piece of a grand cosmic puzzle. A world where the Mayans, the Incas, the Aztecs, and yes, even the ancient Egyptians are all connected. A world where every monument, every artifact, every scroll is a breadcrumb leading us to the truth. Stay tuned for our next adventure, where we'll dive into the enigmatic world of the ancient Mayans and their mysterious calendar. Until then, keep questioning everything.